Walsh at Home Edition. Today we're going to be completing a directed drawing of a toucan. Here's mine. Here's another one I created. So today if you follow along with my video you'll be able to create something similar. For this you're going to need a piece of paper, any paper will do, and something to write with. If you want to create something as colorful as mine, you'll need some coloring items as well. Remember though, artists, nothing is ugly except for a bad attitude, and you can always pause and re-watch the video as many times as you need. Let's get started. Okay guys, now we're ready to start drawing. You should have a piece of paper, and something to draw with. Um, I would really recommend using though a pencil or something with an eraser um, just to make it a little bit easier. Okay, um, I have my paper going vertical so that means um, up and down so not laying down lazy but standing up tall um, because we're drawing a toucan remember and he's got some long tail feathers so um, the top of my paper is right up here and bottom down here. Um, you want to come to the top, maybe just come down a couple of inches, not too far, not to the middle, and you're going to draw a C shape, so watch me first. So it's going to come up, and it's going to curve over, and it's going to come down like a letter C, and it's going to come back around like this. It's a little wobbly, that's okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, now I'm gonna come back to that top point and I'm going to kind of visualize. So I want to um, create sort of like the top of a banana shape. It's gonna come down, it's gonna follow the curve of this, but it's gonna kind of stop right here. So watch me. I'm gonna make sure my pen is at the top point and it's gonna swoop down and it's gonna curve around and it's gonna stop. Okay, now we need it to swoop over and come down and connect down here. So what we want to do is we want to kind of bring it over and we want to swoop it down like this. So kind of where it's in line with that top point, you want to just bring it down. Okay, now, like I said, we want to connect. Sort of a strange shape. Okay, now we need to close this up and we want to kind of make this line a little bit curved. We don't want to come in as much as this, but we want to close it up sort of like this. Watch me. Like this. So I just took a little bit of a dent. Okay, and now in this space, we're going to draw that circle. That's the eye. Now there are several different ways to draw an eye, but I'm going to do this. I'm going to create sort of that curved line, again for the C, and I'm going to color it in, but I'm going to leave just like a super tiny bit of white, so watch. To create that cartoon eye look, that's like a glint in the eye right there. So if that's too difficult, just color it in, or make whatever kind of eye, but that's your bird's eye. Okay, now a toucan, um, it's not just a regular bird, it has a huge curving beak. So in this space here, we're gonna kind of create another curved line um, and it's almost like a banana shape again. So we're gonna come down and we're gonna curve and then we're gonna come down and we're gonna curve and connect. So watch. Not perfect, but that's okay. So it comes down and it curves like this. Now, we need to come and we need to make another curved line and we need to connect it. So if it's easier to come from here and go this way or if it's easier to go from here and go that way, let me show you what we need. Connect them. Okay, now in about the midway point, you can put a little dot for yourself um, and then here is where you need to end up 
we're going to create another line and it's going to follow the same curve as before. This is how he opens his beak. Okay, looking good so far. Okay, now we're going to create some feather detail, um, but we also want to create uh, his wings. So it's going to be sort of like a check mark. Um, watch me. You're going to come from his side, maybe about midway. You're going to make a diagonal line out, and you're going to put a hook on it. And then from there, you're going to create a diagonal line this way. Sort of like a V. And then below it, we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to come from about midway between here and here, and we're going to create the same line. We're going to come out with a tiny diagonal line. So watch me. And we don't want it to make a pointy corner to go up we want it to be a little bit smoother so we need a little bit of a curve down there sort of like a smile and then you want to come up alongside this line so that's his two wings right there okay now in this space we're going to create some lines i think i can fit probably about three lines we don't want them to be straight we want them to have a little bit of a curve so i like to follow the edge of this body line here watch me i'm gonna kind of create a line it's gonna come down and it's gonna swoop around just slightly and i think i can fit another one i'm gonna vary the size the length and I'm going to swoop it down. And then maybe I'll make one here. And that's looking a little bare, so I think I'll just make maybe like one more. Those are like feather lines. Okay, now, down below him, this is the space that his tail feathers will come from. So we're going to draw one line coming here and then we'll kind of draw a line next to it and we'll have them end up sort of in similar spots and then we'll close them up. So here's what we'll do. We'll make a line coming down as far as you want. I have a lot of space so I'm going to come farther. And then I'm going to make like a line over here. I don't want it to be too skinny of a tail because it's not a tail it's tail feathers so they kind of fan out so we want to maybe kind of draw a line perp, going this way and I said we want it to be in similar spots so this is too short I can already tell so I need to come down a little more remember it's feathers so it's not perfect okay now I need to close them up I don't want it to be a super straight line across. I don't want to leave like a pointy corner. I like these rounded edges. So you can kind of put a hook and a hook. And then you can come together with a line like this. You can close it up. Okay, so maybe it goes a little out on this side, but that's okay. Remember, nobody is perfect. Okay, now I want to make some more details in the feathers and I'm going to use lines again. And remember, we don't want them to be quite straight because it doesn't really look as realistic as we'd like it. So we want to kind of curve these lines. You don't want them too close together. So maybe I'm going to curve them this way and then maybe I'll make another one and I might curve it the other way and then maybe this one, I might curve it the same way. But then this one, I want to curve it back. Maybe this guy's going to be little. My marker is running out. That's okay. And then maybe this one. And then maybe we want to do a tiny one right here. Okay. How are we doing so far? Looking pretty good, guys. Okay, now he's missing a little talon. He needs a little claw because we want it to look like he's landed on a branch just to get a little bit of a break. 
So here's how we can do that. In this little spot right here, or really anywhere low down on his belly point, um, you're just gonna make a little bump. So it's almost like a smile, a very dramatic smile, or a U shape coming right there. Okay, and now we're just gonna make him one claw. You can make more, but I'm gonna make one long claw. And that's called a talon. So it's gonna go like this. It's gonna be another curve shape like this. And stop, you don't want it to be too long. Maybe it's longer. And then you're gonna make it come back up. That's it. You just close it off. You can even use a straight line. So that's pointy. That's it for that. It's almost like a half moon shape. Okay, now behind the bird, so not in front of him, we're not gonna draw a line through it. We're gonna come like it's behind the bird and he's landed atop of a little branch. So how to do that? From somewhere on his talon, that's this, that's his little claw, somewhere on here, you'll make a line going out to the edge. And it can be straight, um, but maybe it has a little bit of bumps in it. So maybe it's like a little wavy line, like a up like a granny drew it like this maybe that's a little too much that's okay okay and then down below it we're gonna make another wavy curvy line so you can make it go from this point and it just meets the edge of the paper okay now what did I mean when I said it's gonna go behind well this is what I mean you got to keep it going so oop, we have to pick our pen up because we've run into a shape and now let's use our finger to visualize. The line is going behind the tail feathers and it's gonna come back out again over here and it's gonna lead us off to the edge of the paper. And so we have to do the same thing up here because this is a branch. He's landed on the branch of a tree. So if I were to have my pen coming here, I'd pick it up and then maybe I'd lay it back down somewhere over here and I want it kind of plumpy because it is a tree and a tree is not perfect. Okay, now we can make this good drawing even better by adding some details to our tree. So let's add some lines inside to make bark. Um, you don't want them very dramatic at all. They're just kind of slightly curved. Slightly curved. Now, if maybe there's a knot. That's like a black mark in the wood. You can color it in. It's not a dot though. So you wanna make it kind of misshapen. Maybe you just wanna make a line and then you wanna thicken some of the parts of the line. Okay. It's up to you how much bark you put in your tree. Okay, now let's imagine that um, there's some leaves coming off of this small branch. So you can either draw them coming directly from the branch or you can give yourself like a little bit of some branch coming off. Okay, now at the top, here's how to make a leaf. You can make a curved line and then you can close it with another curved line. You can put a line in the middle. Remember, we don't wanna to use too straight of lines, maybe make a slight curve. Okay, and then from there, you make a line going to each of the edges. You wanna get the angle right though. Okay, so if you've made it look like the letter V, then you need to keep that same angle. So down and then up, down and then up. Okay, now if the fancy leaf is a little too difficult, you can just do something super basic. How about just oval shapes? And then you dissect them in half and you make those V lines again. And then maybe you make a couple of different sizes so that you have small ones too.
Okay, now, he is in the sky, so if you wanted, you could create some clouds using the bumpy cloud line. Bump, bump. You could overlap them. You could make some coming from behind. You could make them go behind your toucan. They do live in the rainforest. Maybe a rainstorm's moving in, okay? Or you can create some more branches down here. So maybe you want to um, create something that's coming up from the edge of your paper. Remember, you want it to come from behind. This is another branch. So we need to put the bark again. A tree doesn't have to be perfect, it's nature. But you make sure that you want to use a variety of curves and thicknesses. You don't want it to look too uniform because it's a tree and it's bark. It's supposed to be like shadows. Okay. There we go. Okay, now let's carve out some more detail in this tail area because remember these are supposed to be feathers so I just want to make the shape of the feathers a little more pronounced now that I look at it I'm gonna do this I just kind of made a line to represent more feathers I'm just kind of closing it up with the curve so if you didn't catch that, when I got down to the bottom of my curve line, I brought it back up again. Sort of like an ice cream cone shape, but I want to make them round. It's like a bunch of feathers overlapping because he's a bird and birds are covered in feathers. Okay. What do you think, guys? I think I'm all done. I think I'm ready for some color. So if you would like to see um, the coloring portion, stay tuned. Otherwise, um, if you're done and all you had today was a writing utensil and a piece of paper, um, this is awesome and I can't wait to hang it up. Okay guys, I'm ready to color. Um, I've laid out some of my stuff. Just to make it easier, I'm using some markers. I just have a random assortment of markers at home. If you don't have any, you can skip that step, but it's a nice shading trick. And then I'm using some Crayola crayons like we have in the classroom, but any crayons or color pencils that you want to use would be awesome. Okay, so I looked at a couple of pictures of a toucan, and I have a plan for our drawing, but before we really get started with that, let's do some outlining. Um, I want to do, first I'm going to start with our bird, and I'm going to go for the beak. Now, toucans have a super big, obviously, and bright beak. So I'm gonna pick some super bright colors, orange and yellow, and I'm gonna do a blend. And what I discovered is that the body of a toucan is mostly black. So I'm gonna make my toucan black because it is a rainforest toucan. Um, but if you wanna color yours uh, differently, feel free. Okay, did you see I just went out of the lines? I'm gonna show you how to fix that in your own drawing. Okay. You can take your black marker and you just trace over it. And you swallow up anything that went outside of the black line. Ta-da! This like it never even happened. Except for now my black's a little bit wavy. That's okay. Okay. Problem solved. All right guys, I'm gonna keep on going. Um, I said that the majority of my toucan is going to be black, but I'm gonna use a little bit of red for some detail. So I'm gonna do that right now. 
Okay guys, so now I'm ready to start coloring in my larger shapes. Remember, we want to outline with markers and we want to color in with crayons. Um, and before I do a time lapse, um, I wanted to show you some of my crayons look like this and some of them look like this. Um, this is my brown crayon and I'm going to use this to color in the tree branches and it's going to work just great. So. Don't worry if you have small crayons. And then um, I just want to also recommend that you always color in the same direction. It helps for neatness. And then the second thing I want to talk to you about, as always, is layering um, to create new colors. So I think um, I'm going to color the bird and the clouds and the tree first and then I'll get into the background and I think in the background I'm going to layer a combination of different blues and maybe some purple and I might even try to add in some pink at the very bottom if I want to make it look like a sunset. I'm not sure. So let's get started. Okay guys, so I have added a few extra shading elements to my drawing and I wanted to talk to you about them and just in case you wanted to try. So in the tail feather area, I used a combination of red. I used the red first and then I took super light, like the lightest touch ever, a little bit of my black crayon and I just very, very carefully drew a little bit around the edges of each of the shapes. So you're not pressing hard. You don't want to leave like a super hard line. I went a little bit too dark right here. Um, but you're just trying to kind of make a soft layer over the top to let that under layer show mostly, but just give it a little more depth. And I did the same thing for the Toucan's beak. Um, I used orange around the edges, just like I did with the marker. And then I took a yellow shade and I colored over it so I'm gonna do that for you now so you can see what I mean I like to call it just like fuzzing up the edge so you take your crayon or a color pencil this would work with and you just want to kind of like make super tiny back and forth marks right along the edges of all the shape so I'm not doing it very dark and I'm not making it perfect I'm just kind of coming in and then I'm gonna go to the other side and I'm just kind of making like zigzaggy, almost like scribbly scrabbles, but in the same direction. You want them singularly directed. And I did leave a tiny space. This, this shape is little, but with my yellow, here's what you'll do. You'll just kind of go back over it and concentrate on the empty space, the white space. But also you just want to kind of like imagine like this lighter color is kind of like blending in with the darker color. And that's how you can create that super awesome blended look. And that's what I did for the top. Super nice. And I'm gonna do the same thing, I think, for the clouds. So here we go. just about does it I think it looks pretty good what do you think well I can't wait to see your creations until next time artists <laughs>